So we're, we're speaking, uh, I, I, I'm so used to saying we're here with, but uh, we're virtually with uh, Larry Keel and uh, Larry, we're going to talk about your new album, American Dream, coming out. Uh, uh, well, actually, you're having an album release party uh, this weekend at B Chord, or album re release show, I should say. Uh, but before we get started, uh, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Danny Balfour and Funky Dyes. You can check out Danny's Dyes on the Funky Dyes Facebook page, including these sweet masks. Uh, musicians, uh, check out the masks that he created for Railroad Earth. They're in Railroad Earth's merch uh, table and an online store. And then contact Danny and have him produce some stuff for your band. So uh, Danny Balfour's Funky Dyes, thank you, Danny, for all your support. And uh, of course, we're, we're here by ourselves, so we don't really need the mask on. But uh, all right, we're thinking that uh, you're missing out on the merch, brother. You should have a mask with the big mustache, just a white mustache on there, and maybe say keel over top of it. Yeah, there you go. We, I uh, believe you'd sell a few of those. I believe we would now. We're big big mask wearers. And uh, we actually did a thing, uh, I guess, about a month ago. It was with a merch company, and they created a, a few masks for us with a little Larry Keel fish on the mask, you know. I was looking looking at your merch store and didn't see one. That's why I brought it up. Uh, I will work on that. It's a great idea. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you've how you've been doing. Uh, we haven't seen you for a while. COVID's kept you off the road, and uh, I know you've done some private gigs through the summer, some real small things. And uh, uh, what about the fishing? Well, you know, I've been getting back more into it. I got to do some uh, fishing out on the salt water, out on the Chesapeake Bay. Did good. Caught a bunch of drum. Did a, did a bunch of that, and. Uh, kept a few for the winter time because winter's going to get tough and uh been doing some trout fishing around the house here and in, in lexington and the blue ridge mountains a lot of, it's really good trout season right now so trying to get out and do a little bit more of that and i'm sure i'll be doing some of that during the winter you know it's about to get slow for us so. but uh yeah everything's been going good doing a lot of gardening around the house trying to uh, I always like gardening. I grow about everything, tomatoes and peppers and carrots and onions and leeks and beans and whatever you want. But uh, just trying to fill the freezer up for winter again and uh, just sort of that sort of thing, you know, just trying to keep busy that way. And um, spent some time writing some music, made a CD, uh, just try to keep myself busy, you know. A lot of, a lot of musicians I saw uh, on social media doing things like uh, – you know, 30 songs and 30 day challenges, things like that. Uh, was this a time, uh, I've heard some people say that it really stifled their creativity. Other people felt it really uh, kind of gave them a charge being off the road and having the time to really work on writing. How was it for you? For me, I had, uh, I've been a road dog for so long, for many, many years, 20, 25 years plus probably. And, uh, it was very strange for a little bit, uh, just not having anything. And of course, you know, very uh, stressful and all that. And just seeing, we had, we had a really big year of shows lined up uh, all over the country and uh, internationally too. And uh, everything canceled. And it was like, wow, just going to have to make use of our, out of our time. And uh, after after having some time to reflect and everything i uh i play a lot of banjo and uh i sit around and i write a lot of songs on the banjo and as as that as spring hit and COVID quarantined everybody i just I, I spent a lot of time with my banjo basically and uh you know i i guess my head began to clear after being off the road and uh, after being on the road so long and uh a lot of ideas came to me and uh, um, basically a whole CD's worth of songs uh, came at me pretty fast and I uh, tried to document them and hopefully it, the points come out uh, positively to everybody, you know. And this album is uh, a little different in that uh, you write, yeah, you play everything, one of all the instruments yourself. Uh, you know, obviously you're quarantined, you're, you're in your home studio, but now you got a pretty good bass player there with you. And uh, uh, did she have any role in this other than being the muse? Yeah, she, she was the muse. Uh, 
I, it's just something I felt like I, I wanted to approach uh, just strictly me, no one else's ideas. And I, and uh, she, she had opinions about different things, you know, of course, because she's a major badass bass player. But I, uh, I'm like, well, I, this is the way I'm going to do it. This is the way I'm hearing it. So, yeah, I just I sort of stayed my path, you know. Now, uh, with you playing everything on it, how hard is that, or is it pretty easy to translate now to the band? Um, it's been very easy because they, with these new songs, they had a reference point of someone else to hear do the song, you know, being an original song. They, uh, they, they have a ref reference point to start with where a lot of times the songs I write, I go, okay, here's a song I wrote and I have my guitar and I play it for them and they, and they have to basically invent their own part and that creates the song, you know? So, uh, yeah, this, it's been very easy for them to learn it and uh, it seems to be uh, transmitting well in, in a live atmosphere as well. Now you you know the the music I don't think it's any surprise to anybody uh you know you don't fit the uh strict traditionalist uh definition of bluegrass you know and uh, uh I I use a phrase a lot that I learned from you uh you said it at a show in uh, some little underground place down in uh, Mount Holly Pennsylvania I think it was a Halloween show Oh you wow referred, you referred to it as freaky blue bluegrass and, uh, you know, people get this, well, progressive, traditional, uh, you know, all these different, uh, you know, jam grass, speed grass. Uh, I just like that phrase, freaky bluegrass. Yeah. But, hey, uh, the... Talk a little bit about the influences and uh, how you incorporate all the different influences into the music on this album, because it is your own unique style. I, uh, you know, the album is just sort of a, uh, autobiographical autobiography autobiography of, of what I've done through the years time on the road and uh, how, how that all goes down and uh, the current atmosphere of, of the the environment that's out in the world today a lot of anger and fear and uh, hate and all that and it's just sort of hmm, uh you you, you want to write about it but you sort of i don't i don't want to want it to reflect it in a negative tone i, I want uh i want to just always try to be positive about that and uh like a you know a lot of the there's influences of like uh little uh nieces and uh nephews of mine uh, and, and how they uh, are growing up and how it's fun to watch them just be happy and carefree about everything and that's very inspiring and are you there yep you, okay and uh you know even weird things like uh folklore like uh uh, there's an old saying that cardinals, when they come back to your around your house, that it's an old friend of yours that uh, uh, that has passed on, and and they're they're a messenger from basically the spirit world. And so there's things like that that inspire me. Uh, my brother, so I read a song about him that inspire. He's very inspiring. Really, one of the best people I know. Uh, yeah, just things like that, you know, yeah, it, all, it, all kinds of topics. It kind of seems like a, a man of a certain age uh, reflecting on a half century on the planet and uh, and uh, contemplating what comes next. Yeah, you know, probably. Yeah, it's, it, it all came to me very clearly, and uh, I just wanted to document it and get it out there to everyone. Let's, let's talk about the songs and, uh, you know, the first one, American Dream, and, uh, you know, you, you don't want to – be an angry old white guy is that it's tough sometimes isn't it i mean i find myself i, I don't want to be but damn i mean so much that through our lives uh so much progress that we made and then when you see the team in the slide backwards sometimes it's hard not to be angry uh, how do you fight that talk a little about that song 
Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's what I say, this song about the current climate and basically how I view it and how I would like it to be. And, uh, you know, if I was a kid, I wouldn't want to grow up in this certain way. I, you know, I don't want to grow up to be another angry old white guy and self-important wrapped up in a white lie. I want to spread happiness around and uh, not bring everybody around me down, basically, you know, because I think everybody's been pulled down pretty hard here for a while. So anything you can do to lift somebody up is a good thing. I don't want to grow up in a world that's filled with hate. I'd rather look at our differences and relate. Help everyone achieve most anything. So they won't sleep through their American dream. Song Best of Man, uh, you wrote it about your brother. G yeah. give, us a, give us a good, give us one good story about your brother that really tells us what the guy's like. Oh man, there's so many. He, uh, he's been an inspiration to me all my life. He, uh, he's the most honest person I know. And he uh, would absolutely do anything for anybody that needed help. Here's a song for the best man that I know. Not just saying that cause he's my bro Lights shining brighter than the sun Warming everyone A better man you'll never know Always watching out for He, uh, he, he works for the school system and, uh, is, is it's so dearly loved by every kid in the school. They call him uh, Mr. Gary because his name's Keel, and it's sort of, yeah, you know, it's sort of weird when all the kids go, "Hey, Mr. Keel, hey, Mr. Keel, hey, Mr. Ke Mr. Gary." Sounds better. So, um, but uh, yeah, he, he's uh, he's taking care of my mother uh, for uh, you know ever since my father's passed away. And so that's dearly admirable as well and uh yeah there's just not enough great things i can say about him mother nature obviously uh you know it's a it's an anthem to the environment and the need to take care of the planet mother nature selfless sister to the sky mother nature she loves us like a lioness nature we owe her our life mother we can't live without her. I want to talk about another aspect of it. You, uh, the notes that they sent me, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, being inspired by the old uh, chiffon uh, margarine commercials. <laughs> Not nice to fool Mother Nature. Oh yeah, that's half century knowledge there. And uh, uh, talk to me a little bit about you know I, I I feel the same way when I mentioned to my 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 daughters of. Uh, about uh, the brain, the uh, eggs in the frying pan, and uh, they don't know those commercials. Uh, no. Talk a little bit about how that worked into the song and how that inspired you. It was just always so creepy, you know, because I think it was like, it, yeah, it was for chiffon margarine, which was like a fake product, basically. And, uh, you know, and it was, they would always, Come, you'd always see it and the lightning bolt was striking in, in the interior. It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. And it's always real creepy when you're a kid, you know. And uh, I don't know, the song sort of came to me in a, in a just sort of a funk beat fashion. Okay, to fool Father Bluegrass by slipping that peep on him. Yeah, I don't know. 
know if that's okay, but uh, yeah, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And well, the P Funk, he he played with uh, Mac Wiseman on one of those records, and there's combinations of that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, you know, it. Uh, I I spend ninety percent of my day outside and uh, doing outdoorsy things, and uh, just trying to take care of of my place and uh my mark that that i'm gonna leave so uh and i figure you know mother nature's gonna be here far longer than all of us so that's who you need to respect and uh appreciate every day on long way round that that's an older song that you wrote uh what back in the early 2000s that uh acoustic syndicate actually made it the title cut of their album yeah, we uh, I wrote that back then for uh, Steve McMurray of the Acoustic Syndicate. He asked me, he said, he said, hey, boy, I'm making an album. And he goes, you, uh, I'd love to have one of your songs on it. And I said, well, have you got one you like right now? And he says, no, he goes, I want you to write me a song. I said, all right, I'll write a song about you. And uh, yeah, he took it. I basically wrote it as sort of an old time song and uh it sort of had that claw hammer banjo thing going and ha had the old timey sound but uh they redid it for their title track and uh really put a sort of a hardcore blues uh slow beat to it uh, sort of stop beat and uh it was really cool man it's great it's a great version that they did but uh I, uh, I wanted to redo it the whole time just sort of as a bluegrass song because it's it it's sort of I've, I've written a few like the mountain song and pioneers that are just sort of straight out bluegrass and uh, yeah I, I wanted to redo this one as bluegrass so, and, and I wanted to test my banjo skills or whatnot mandolin skills see if I could pull it off you know but uh, yeah a lot of fun. upon my mind trying to slow it down Tell us a little bit about black so black and white and uh, uh is that uh, some electric guitar on there or you know we can never tell with you because uh, the effects and the pedals and stuff you uh you, you know you you that freaky bluegrass comes out of that guitar and uh yeah. but it sounded like maybe some electric guitar in there yeah there was electric guitar and uh mandolin and bass and acoustic guitar on there and uh yeah, just sort of a bluesy whatnot song that uh, uh, I I think I wrote it right around. Uh, let's see, 2016, I think, right shortly after that, uh, during that last election, and uh, it's just sort of a, a whatnot song about. Uh, anger and greed and and uh, the big machine and uh, whatnot and uh, yeah just a bluesy rock and hardcore rock and roll blues sound you know <laughs> Burning that passion Playing with fire No hesitation Lust and desire 
desire Yeah, truth and deception Lies and deception We're living in color And so black and white Now, precious times, and you mentioned the little ones in your life, and uh, uh, so, you know, you get this picture of... Uh, you know, Uncle Larry on the floor making a tent and and uh, playing in the kitchen. And, uh, you know, anybody who's had daughters can get, can say, yeah, it, it, it happens and it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but it, it's kind of a little different from the image of you were at the campfire putting the fire, putting the guitar in the campfire. Uh, talk a little bit about these, these youngsters in your life and, and uh, you know, kind of how they inspired the music. Yeah, man, I, you know, I guess we all have a point to where we want to get back to our childhood in some way. Um, maybe sooner or later we'll each get there, but uh, I just, I love to watch children, uh, all children, and w watch the joy of them learning something or just playing in their little mystical world that they create every second of the day over and over. And, uh, or just the the magic and the awe of watching them fly a kite or just uh, running around the yard or whatnot, whatever makes you feel good, dancing to your happy song, you know. Uh, but yeah, you know, images like that, that uh, I, it's it's a true joy to put that uh, into music and and hope that that joy translates to people. It's a pretty day in the yard to play Spring is in the air Flying kites and running around without a care We talked a little bit about the bass solo. Let's talk some more about it. Try. Uh, <laughs> how, much, how much work did you have to do on the bass? And, uh, you know, how different is it playing there? Because you, you said playing an upright, I think it said. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, it, 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 you know, mechanically a little different uh, th than playing a guitar or a mandolin or a banjo. Uh, how, how much work was that, or do you do that from time to time? Uh, I, uh, I've, I've played bass throughout, throughout my career uh, in jam sessions and whatnot at festivals, and uh, I always enjoy doing it. It's, it's just a fun change of pace for, from what I do. It, it slows it down. And, gets back to the basics of the beat and everything i love that and uh with this one i uh it, it took me some time to sit down and, and and work the bass line out that i wanted um to get it to get it good and solid and stay on it i basically would spend like a week on the bass out in the woodshed you know playing all the songs then I spend a week on the mandolin playing all the songs and just trying to brush up to get it all recordable, you know. And uh, but with, with with the bass, I I just had heard I just felt this weird thing like a a chromatic rundown on on the bass. I uh, I had a guitar pick sitting next next to me and I just sort of did this weird little thing. You'll hear people will hear it when it when it comes out. Uh, just something different, a surprise. I'm trying to right off my wrongs. Where have all the hours gone? I need a change in my forecast. The weather and the storms I'd pass. Uh, you, you kind of told the story a little bit about the Canaries, but uh, just talk a little bit about that song. And uh, again, it seems like that reflecting. Yeah, it's like I've always had a fascination with, uh, like I say, I'm out in nature all the time and outside a lot. And 
and I, I like feeding the birds in the, in the winter time and all that and keeping everything good. And, uh, yeah, it's, it, I basically wrote the song about uh, cardinals when, when they uh, come back around the house a lot, when you keep seeing a lot of them, that they're uh, messengers from old friends that have, have passed away. And you know, it's a, sort of an old Indian fol folklore, Native American. And uh, yeah, I've always felt strongly about that. And I see so many of them uh, around my house every day. And uh, I just, it makes you think, you know, and uh, that's what that song's about. Many cardinals come to see me every day Checking up on me, wondering what they say Old friends of my life who went away Dressed in red are here today Old Man Kelsey's another one you wrote a while ago. The road is long and life's troubles aren't as bad as they seem. Singing songs, whistling birds, and the magic that feeds all our dreams. The rising sun, the loaded gun, a ton of fun. I've seen them one and all. The latest night, a million miles, no order was too tall. Traveling down the highway, from the mountains to the mighty rolling sea. Old man Kelsey's ocean. Still very relevant. Uh, how has life on the road changed since then? Is it uh, still pretty much the same? I mean, bigger gigs, bigger audiences, but. Uh, Still the same kind of grind? Uh, it's all changed entirely for, for me. It's like everything that we're doing is uh, outdoor and socially distant and everybody has to wear a mask and uh, you're at half capacity on most events, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it's a lot different, but you can tell that people really want the music bad and you can feel their energy a lot more. And uh, I, I'm just thankful to be playing, honestly, because so many people have had such a hard time uh, not being able to play. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm very thankful. And then the uh, last cut on the, on the CD is uh, Mars Cry, uh, written about a feral cat that took you a long time to warm up to. Uh, is there anything autobiographical about that? The dawn has broken No words spoken The hand that shined up the dew On the grass Sings to light my onward way Cardinals calling Daylight falling And I just can't seem to find the words to say. Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, there's, it, it's sort of, it's, uh, it's, it's, it steps into the realms of, of psychedelia in a way to where you're talking about the cat sort of, but at a certain point, you're reflecting on your life and 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 things that uh, are prevalent in your in your own life and uh, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. We're gonna see you at B Chord this weekend. Uh, you've played there already uh, since the uh, outdoor show started. Uh, tell the folks a little bit about that venue and uh, why they ought to come out in particular for this show and uh, Frank Sullivan opening up. 
Absolutely. It, uh, it, Marty there at the B Chord, Marty Dowry, he has really taken every precaution to make sure that uh, everybody stays apart. Uh, you, you stay within your little pod area that you have or, or you're just your own little space. And they, they've marked a lot of it all out. And uh, they, they announce constantly about wearing masks. If you, if you stand up, please put a mask on which is perfect uh, uh totally agreeable um and their beer is amazing uh they're they're wonderful people they, everyone there is so nice uh good food and just a good time all the way around and virginia in the fall is just gorgeous and it, it uh you know b cords outdoor shows have uh I, I almost would say saved a lot of souls this fall. I mean, uh, some people were, you know, just pent up and uh, longing for a chance to have some live music, but to do it safely. And, and like you say, they're really good with the protocols there and the people respect it, people behave. And uh, you can't beat the Juicy Garcia, although they've been out of that the last couple of times I've been down there. Uh, her special IPA is pretty tasty too. Uh, Larry, we'll look forward to seeing you down there this weekend. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. And uh, this was my first Zoom, so seems like we did it. We are there on Saturday. Uh, it's going to be a little chilly, but you'll heat it up, and uh, I will heat it up for you. You know, Frank will get cooking. So it's, it's two fine bands. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, well, thanks, thanks for everything, and thanks for doing all this. Appreciate your time, man. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. See you Bye. Soon.